My name is Andrew Dunning and I am here in the Bodleian Library's Center for Digital Scholarship to show you how we show books to students and to other groups of people when it's not possible for them to get into the building. So we have been, uh, of course, you can always use uh, photo, still photographs of images which are absolutely fabulous. You can, you can look at them in almost any level of detail. They're great for, for textual work. You can figure out all sorts of uh, material um, objects of it. But if you are, uh, but at the same time, you, you lose the, the three-dimensionality of your collection item. And so if you want to regain some of that at least, you can always show, you can always manipulate an item over a film. So we have two devices that we've been using for that. All you really need, in fact, is a halfway decent camera that is on a long and stable stick um, that can be easily manipulated. And so the easiest solution to that is a visualizer. This is just a little, uh, this is just a little device that costs about 200 pounds. It's very simple. This is a 8 megapixel webcam, really, that's just mounted on an, on an arm that goes up and down. It can go side to side. You can you, you can put it up. Uh, you can put it up vertically if you want to use it as a webcam. It also has a little microphone built into it. And so this works quite well. Now the big problem is that if you're going to be using this with large books, so so anything, so these foam pads uh, will. Are, uh, that's you know that's roughly representative uh, representative of a average size book, but some books are a you know if you have a big folio size book, um, this uh, if you have this sitting directly on a table, it simply will not have a proper focal width to deal with that. And so we have uh, our wonderful colleagues have actually made this wooden box, which will keep it stable for you. There's, of course, no sense in cheaping out on, a, on an item if it's going to put your wonderful collection items in any harm's way. And so we've, uh, we have, this box has a little slot in here so that this can't, there's really no way that this can tip over. Uh, just to demonstrate, if you might think, oh, I can just, at first we thought, oh, we could just, um, just balance it on, on top of some sort of other object, but don't do that. Um, if you notice, if you put this, for example, on, on some foam pads, this is really quite tippy. Um, even if it's just, uh, sitting on top of an, uh, an object, it's not going to be stable. So make sure that you have some sort of counterweight to stop it from falling over. Because we want to prevent harm to collection items in anything that we do. So that's one option. This works. This this simply uh, this simply plugs into your computer. It's a USB webcam, um, and so you can use this as a replacement for um, you, can, you can use this in pretty much any application. Now another easy option is that you might already have in your pocket is to simply have a use a smartphone camera on again some sort of mountable arm. Now, note that you might think, oh, it's just a smartphone camera, but in fact, pretty much any, uh, even, even on a really inexpensive smartphone, um, that will usually have something that's just as good as, as this camera. Again, this is only an 8 megapixel camera, and it's good enough for online presentations. And so this is, all you really need in a, a tripod is something that has an arm that can come up and down and, and that you can use to put your camera, you could also use a DSL, uh, you, you can plug in many DSLR cameras into your computer as, as a USB camera. Um, you just need something that will allow it, allow it to point down at your item that you'll have on your rest. And so we have here, a again, this, this particular cam, uh, tripod is quite nice. It's, uh, it just, the arm actually goes all the way up and all the way down, so you can put it at pretty much any angle you want. Uh, you can also see it has a, has a ball head that has a little slot right here. And so you can actually move the head, um, you, can, you can contort this into very, very unusual angles. And so this is really great if you have an odd, an oddly shaped collection item, or you just need to mount your camera um, 
at a, at a high, uh, um, at, at say, at a distance from, from the item. Now you attach the either your camera or the phone just using uh, just using a standard camera mount. So this is this comes off the top of the tripod. This is just a standard. This is a standard mount that you can that you'll typically find in pretty much any camera. And then this is this is a very simple phone adapter that has springs on it and uh, just goes out. And then you just screw it onto that. Now, what you want in a tripod, ideally, is again something that uh, something that will go sideways. You also want something that um, you also want something that you can manipulate easily. Because one of the one of the flaws, if you are using a, a smartphone, one of the problems is that you can't really zoom in and out very easily. When although you can with a camera, you can't. You can't do so if you're if you're showing an item over a Microsoft Teams or a Zoom call because there's no controls for it, and so you need something when you're looking for something. You need make, need to make sure that it's really easily it, it can be easily moved up and down, and that it can be locked in place really sturdily when you're using it. Now, one the main caution just says we we can have some issues with our visualizer falling over and we need to take precautions against that. When you're using a tripod and you have the arm out horizontally, make sure that you have the arm lined up with one of the legs of the tripod. Because no, because it's a because it's a tripod, if you have the arm lined up with a leg, there's very little that is going to happen to that. If you have the arm you might think, oh I'm going to have it up closer to my desk by um, by having, having these legs uh, right up against it. Well, the problem is if you have the arm in between the legs, it's really easy to tip it over. Um, and, you know, goodbye 10,000 pound manuscript. So let's, uh, so make sure that you have the arm lined up with the leg. Now I'm going to show you how to set up your webcam when you are in either a Zoom or a Teams meeting. Now Zoom works extremely well if you're using a visualizer as a second USB webcam. Say you're in a Zoom meeting. We're just going to create a fake one for the time being. And you can see my wonderful, you can see my pre-pandemic hairstyle. And so if you are, when you are in Zoom, it's not entirely obvious what you're supposed to do because you might think, okay, uh, when I'm using the video, I'll just switch to my USB camera and we can see our, our wonderful book rest right, right here. Well, that, that does work, but it's actually not the ideal function because the problem is that this won't, what you want to be able to do in most circumstances is to be able to present your collection item to an entire group. And what you're doing here is simply, you're simply showing uh, you'll simply show up in the gallery as one other person in the group. So that's actually not what you want to do. And you'll notice that this is a major flaw in Microsoft Teams as well. What you want to use is the share screen option. So if we go to share screen, uh, this is again not at all obvious. If you need to go to the advanced tab right here, and then you want to you, you want to present or show uh, content from a second camera. So if we take that option, you don't need to share the sound. You don't need to optimize it for a video clip. Just click, click the share button. And now we have, we can, you can see here we have, uh, you, can, you can see that I'm still here. You can still, I'll, I'll still show up as a second person. And we have our, whatever we want to show underneath our visualizer uh, being shown as, just as if you're using, just as if you're showing slides as an item. Now the situation is different if you're using Microsoft Teams. So, hello, we're on Teams now. And so the, the problem with Teams is that it works uh, really well, unlike Zoom, it's, it's the opposite situation. It works really well if you're using a mobile phone. This, by the way, is just a really cheap um, four-year-old, five-year-old um, iPhone that I, uh, that I bought used. And 
So it works extremely well if you're using a phone, but it does not work very well if you are using a USB camera. And so the problem in Teams is that you can, as, as in Zoom, you can, if we go into more options and we go to the, if we go to our um, options here, you can similarly select your camera as we can go into, we can select our visualizer as a second camera and you can, we can then see whatever is underneath your visualizer and it is absolutely fine that way. Um, the problem again is that you won't be able to see, uh, other people won't be able to actually see what you're doing and they won't be able to see you at the same time as the object. And so if we, one way around that is that you can, you can pin yourself for the rest of the group, but note that that won't, um, that, that won't affect a recording. And you'll, you'll notice as well that if you, um, if you try to use the sharing option within Teams, you can, you can share other windows, but you can't share another video feed. And so this is a really big problem in Microsoft's Teams. Now the way around that is that you need to use your phone. And so when you, um, if you open up uh, Teams on a phone, I can, I can join the device on my, uh, this meeting on my phone, and you'll get two options when you join the call on your phone. There's either um, add this device or transfer to this device. You want to add the device. And so now we have the call on my phone. And once you go on to the meeting, you can, you can then share your phone's video. And in a moment, you can share your phone's video and you will, and so essentially this becomes just a visualizer. And so we'll see, you can see now that you have the, the same effect as what's possible in Zoom. We have our phone, make sure that when you're, when you're using this, make sure you have the rotation, so it's a landscape, uh, because this is, this, is, this is one thing that will easily confuse people. You can have these, the, uh, you can have the rotation set to, uh, set to portrait, which will simply put giant black borders on either side, or you can have it set to landscape, and that's what you have to do in order to have your device, in order to have the, the video be full screen for everybody else. And so that will work just fine, and you can use that wirelessly. In certain situations, this works much better than, than Zoom, in fact. And now I'll show you quickly how to set this up on a phone. You tap the little three dot menu, you tap on the share option, and then you tap on share video. And this will start broadcasting whatever is underneath your phone's camera. You get preview, you tap the start presenting button, and now you have, uh, now you, you functionally have a visualizer, um, except that it's your phone. Now, the one thing you need to be careful of is making sure that you have the orientation right. And so you'll notice that if you, uh, if you have your phone connected to your tripod, uh, one, one pitfall is that you can, if you don't have it oriented right, you can have it going sideways and then your orientation can actually change in the middle of the meeting, which looks really unprofessional. It's a major pain. It will flip back if you put it back into landscape mode, but it's just something to be aware of and it's something that you'll get the hang of with just a bit of practice. And so it's possible to use either Teams or Zoom to, uh, to use very simple equipment to show your items online.